Hi guys. Welcome back everyone to Pub Draw. Yay. This is a draw along show where I, Marisha Ray, hello, the student, learn how to draw with our wonderful teacher, Babs Tar. It's me. Ding. <laughs> this season, Babs is going to teach me all of the basics of drawing and the goal for all of us is to be able to draw a unique D&D character by the end of this season. You know the deal. The lesson for today is Body Basics, part two. Oh my God. <laughs> Working on our body basics. And of course, <laughs> she just dabbed. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Before we get into that, a reminder that this and every episode of Pub Draw is brought to you by our fantastic sponsor, Wacom. For 35 years, Wacom has been making pen technology and products for artists of all levels. Whether you are just starting like me or a pro like Babs, Wacom has something for you. All Wacom tablets and displays work with any computer, Mac or PC, desktop or laptop, and the Intuos pen tablets come with illustration and painting software for the beginner digital artists right out of the box. It's pretty awesome. Learn a lot more and check out Wacom's pin tablets and displays at critroll.com a slash Wacom or on Amazon because <laughs> Amazon. Yeah. Amazon. As always, a big thanks to Wacom for all of their support. And on that, last week we told you how to submit your drawing for a chance to win a Cintiq yeah. 16, which is what I have right here. Our winner this week is Matthew Asonio. <laughs> Asonio, at M Asonio on Twitter. Let's take a look. So we, y'all's y'all's grog drawings were so good. So like good. every single one on Twitter feed looks so good, and like this one is great. But also, what really suckered me, and this is Matt's drawing, but he watches a show with his daughter, and his daughter also she's too young to win, but she also sent her grog in. Can we show that one too? No, oh, it was her. Look at you. I just thought it, I just kind of got suckered into the father daughter thing and <laughs> just make that. I love it. So hopefully you guys can share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So congratulations, you guys. Great Congrats. Job. I love that uh, her grog kind of felt like a, like in a windy day grog. She kind of had this sweeping <laughs> so, to yeah. his to his beard and mustache. Yeah, it reminded me of yours a little bit. Thank, from last thank you. <laughs> Uh, that's a compliment. Mm -hmm. She's very talented. She's very talented. <laughs> Stay tuned because later in the episode we will be doing a giveaway in chat of a Wacom Intuos and telling you how to submit your drawings for a chance to win your very own Intuos Pro, which I have right there. So strong. Here. The big boy. You can get this if you submit like next <laughs> week. Ah. Ding, ding. Okay. <laughs> Let's draw, shall we? Yeah. Okay. So today's episode, um, we did keep we did bow, and I thought we could go over kind of boy body, but also character lineups in general. Yeah, because I see you got all the gnomes. Yeah, I got. I added here. some gnomes and you and Grog on my screen. <laughs> yeah. Some pictures of and Arnold. Pictures for of Arnold. Reference. Those are those aren't even for re those are reference just for our hearts. Mm -hmm. That was uh, just for fun. And just then for Grog, fun. And Grog showed up. He's our uh, he's our mascot. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. So I thought that, and then I also um, pulled a bunch of stuff from like I, I was a game artist for a little bit and on a game that like never came out. So I don't feel too bad about showing any of this artwork because. <laughs> The company went under, and it's never going to see the light of day. So, yeah. Um, but for that job, I was in charge of all the character design for this game, and like uh, we had to go over bad. a lot of the kind of the stuff that we're going over on the show. So I'll probably breeze through that. Um, yeah, and I figure also today uh, we've threatened it since the beginning that we would take questions from chat. So I think today will be a good episode to do some of that. Yeah, now. I think it'd be good, and you know. We'll go over a boy body probably fairly quickly, but I gave you guys kind of the tools to kind of do that on your on your own. We'll, we'll go over it together, but a lot of this pub draw stuff is just to introduce you guys to things, and then you guys got to be your own teacher and, yeah. and and do the footwork and, um, and apparently not forget to do your Loomis head. Not forget your to do your Loomis head and your underdrawing. Marcia was showing me some <laughs> sketches she did over the weekend, and one was wonky and one looked great, and I was like. <laughs> 
which one uh, did so you do your know, on? <laughs> I didn't know that some of these programs, they can capture your drawings you and you can record it and do a time lapse because freaking everything I do is apparently recorded in 2019. <laughs> And so she went back and totally busted me yep. on um I was like, oh, on did you do your underdrawing? Because if you did, none of this would happen. And I like <laughs> scrubbed backwards on her history. No underdrawing. <laughs> she was so mad. I was like, what do we do this show for? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. She had another drawing where you didn't even you didn't, I didn't post. post it, and, you it and apparently it's better. It's way better. And I was like, hmm, I I'll wonder if you did it. your underdrawing for this one. And I scrubbed backwards, and, and there it was. It was a good underdrawing. Don't too. skip steps, guys. I'll post learn it. It'll always make your drawing better, even if it's like not super fun. Like, learn how to draw it really fast and just like yeah. get it down and. I know it's not the funnest. I know it's more fun to jump into the faces, but yeah. it will it will like save you headaches in the future. Like every time like I have to do things like that for coloring. Like I'll do a little color thumbnail and every time I do that little color thumbnail, when I go to actually color the piece, because I did so much leg work on this like loose, fast, smaller, low-key thing, right. the colors just like come out easier because I did this little study first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and, saw how they work together and but but as an artist, like just like you, sometimes, sometimes I'll just go straight into color because it's more fun, and yeah. then I'll struggle way longer on the piece than I needed to if I would have just been smart and done like a little color thumbnail first. Sure. So, 100%. These are lessons that we all have Hard to learn lessons. together. I'm just as guilty for certain things. Occasionally, things. your art heart gets the best it's of too, you. It gets, it gets too eager. Too it gets too eager. <laughs> Um, so yeah, here I did a, did a little lineup on my screen and then I'll go over some like character design-y stuff kind of in general and we'll kind of draw toward the end of the episode, I think. Beautiful, love it. Um, let's start. show my there screen for a second. If we can. Yes, okay. So here we go, we got some cutie patooters on the screen, some of uh, Fox Machina. Um, I was trying to figure out like gnome um, proportions, and these are kind of the same lines that we did for um, Bo, but I drew um, some characters with different heights. Um, technically, this is kind of called a lineup when you have a bunch of characters kind of on one page and others. Like a police lineup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brian Foster knows um, a lot about those. Does he now? Mm -hmm. Um, here's another sample of one with Ariana's great character designs for um, season two. So this is like a lineup, kind of everyone's in one row. Like if you guys want to draw your own, your whole party, it should look like something like this. And look at that if, Motley crew. Look at that Motley crew. And if you're uh, just doing maybe character design and not worrying about your party, I mean, it's going to happen anyway if you have a bunch of different races and classes and such, but. Um, you want to consider, for interest's sake, like different shapes and sizes and heights and races. It just makes for like a more interesting um, thing. And also, I'd like to say I feel like we all coordinated you guys our colors great. pretty I mean, well. Like, look at those jewel tones. They look so good. <laughs> they <laughs> look at those great. blues and greens. I think this has a little bit of a wash over it, but yeah, it totally but does. yeah, but yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. But yeah, that was part of y'all's marketing. You know, you guys kind of had to consider that because you, you are considering Critical Role as like a, a whole empire. And right, stuff. We, we actually try not to stomp on each other's color palettes yeah. too much. We'll kind of like claim color palettes uh, when we start working on our characters. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah. You didn't have to fight for blue with, uh, with the Jester a little bit? No, well, since she had like her green kind of blue in, in her outfit was yeah. more in the greens and she had a, she has a little bit of those like kind of pinks and reds kind oh, of popping yeah, that's through. True. So yeah, she kind of went that blue green and I went like blue, blue. Yeah, yeah, blue. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Teal and blue and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's like a lineup. Another way to check, um, you know, how great your character lineup is going is doing this thing called silhouetting. And these are like it's big cool. terms. This is like a little bit advanced, but you guys just like sit back and absorb and enjoy. Yeah. And some of you guys might be more advanced and this might be fun refresher for you, but 
Um, these are silhouettes, and it's kind of where you black out the character's pose, and you can kind of judge how interesting it looks by boiling it down to the silhouette. So you want to kind of have the pose be sort of dynamic, and then, like, if you were to take one of these and separate them, like, you should be able to tell who that character is still. Right. That would, that's kind of like the, the, um... It's like a rule when it comes to kind of a good to test if a silhouette's really good. Like you can see her little horn, you can see that pose is very like jester, you can see her little cloak and everything. Like yeah, that's, that's cool. kind of shows you what a good silhouette is on its own. Um, you can see jesters, I mean Knot's pose is kind of um, like Tina. She's like a little bit sneaky and she's like right. ready to like run if she has to. A little to. bit on like, edge. So yeah. when you're doing your own characters at home or your own party, that's like something to think about. Like the rogue should be like yeah. ready to run maybe or even Molly. Um, he looks he looks like he's like swagger. What's up? Yeah, he's he got totally swag. does. And that's just their shit. Like that's just their silhouettes. You can read so much already. Yeah. I think that's really telling. Yeah, that's cool. So something to think about if you do a lineup or even just your character on your own like how interesting the pose Poses. is kind of um and then i threw this one in just for fun that's another ah, lineup no, right there <laughs> Classic. oh you're going to the vault Listen. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah these gorgeous babes and then um let's see i this is the game stuff that i worked on um, for this, it was called Warm Warmwood, and it was kind of like a paranormal it's western. Warmwood. Warmwood. This is back seven years ago. I know, but it's just sounds familiar. Feels so. I know. Like the timelines are intersecting. <laughs> um, so this is a uh, a bunch of NPCs. Is this first lineup uh, for the town, and they all have the same height because. In the game, we did these like default animations like rig, and then we could just throw these like on. Oh, on top of it. So like in a perfect like world, if this was like an animation, all these people would kind of be on different heights and stuff. But here you can kind of have a great, you know, diverse line of people with different ages, different um, like backgrounds, like rich or maybe not as rich. Yeah. You know, and how like clothing and hairstyles and um, things like that, like costuming can, can, you can read a lot of from a character by just adding that kind of thing, like. For sure. We can tell this guy's maybe like a fancy man of some sorts, you know, and so so is she, but this guy's just like a blacksmith of some sort. Yeah. He's just like in his like gear and he's dirty and he's just like I love done it's with like, your shit. It's clear he's like some sort of blacksmith because he's definitely been skipping leg day. Yeah. Like he's been yeah. swinging. He works on his, his, his arms. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know, these people are a little bit on the richer side and yeah. um, you got your classic sheriff with the gold star. You can't miss it. So, you know, when you're thinking about your character, um, where, what, what's their background? Like, were they rich? Were they poor? Are they trying to like become rich eventually. I remember like this pinnacle moment. I told someone on set this story already today, but I, I like was a little of Lord of the Rings back in the day. Oh. And my dad would get back in, the day. back in the day and my dad would get me these those DVDs with like the seven discs that had all the Weta Workshop stuff. Oh yeah, and all the back. Which I was like, stuff. I wanted to work at Weta Workshop. Like I wanted to either make my own Weta Workshop or work there like when I was like younger. And um I watched those and I drooled over them. And I remember watching this bit and this, what, what made me appreciate costuming on this like epiphany level. Um, the costumer was talking about um, Smeagol or Gollum and like when he was still, Smeagol, Smeagol. was it? When he yeah. was still Smeagol, she gave him like very consciously this like little handkerchief. And it was kind of like, a hint of like how he kind of fancies himself a little bit of a fancy man. And Interesting. Right? Think, thinks a little bit more highly of himself. Yes, yeah. and like, so when he found the ring, like she was already telling this story that he was susceptible to its like powers yeah. and its greed and like how it transforms you if you have that kind of like. Right, these little tokens of your your wealth or your yeah, privilege. like you know, he's already had the inclination that he's a little bit too. He has, he has deserves bigger things in this like world. That, yeah, you know, and just, with just a handkerchief, and you're like, Babs, that can't possibly. But if every other character around around them like doesn't have that handkerchief, 
you know, like it just, you know, yeah. think about that, you know? For I, sure. I don't know, that like blew my mind and forever that made me realize like, how do people dress themselves? And like, how do I, you know, in, in comics too, I'm like having to dress everyone in this world and yeah. like, what's their background? And like I was saying last week, like I'll dress thugs in bad fashion. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's yeah. like, to me, that means they're like, <laughs> You and you viscerally get this like bad reaction to them because yeah. they're already not like, wearing what? Cool clothes, yeah. <laughs> which is not maybe out in the real world, but like in my world that I build, where everyone looks super fly. Yeah, like I'm gonna put the villains in not super fly outfits <laughs> unless unless they are in the like they're richer, they can afford it, or like they sure they fancy the mob themselves. bosses. Yes, or, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, cool. all that can like. You know, I know you guys probably have a lot of your own background, your characters already designed and you're playing with them already, but you know, I think when you go to draw them, these are like lots of questions you can ask yourself. And even I took a, a, another thing that makes me think of you is like when I was in high school, I also had another epiphany moment where we had to do this. I took um, like a acting, well, it's not acting, but it was like theater class or something. Sure, sure. And, um, it was like one of the electives or whatever. And uh, one of the exercises our teacher made us do is like we had like a two page script and it was only two characters, but you only had these two pages of them talking, but you got one character and you had to like answer all these questions about their life. Was it like a uh, content listing? Yes. They call them content listings. Yeah. yeah it's just like, uh, it's, it's, it's a script, but it could be any person, any yeah. gender, any ro like walks of life. And by like no means do those two pages tell their life story. It's sure. just an interaction. But like from those two, you kind of have to work backwards and be like, oh, uh, well, she's not mad about this thing. So maybe it means that in her childhood, blah, 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 blah. And, right. like, and then what you bring. What are their age? What are it. their backgrounds? Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. And like, that was a great, like every time I design a new character, or like I'm having to draw them, I ask all those questions. And even when I did my own D&D character, like I don't know about you guys, but I asked those same questions. Like what is, what are her goals? And like, where is she trying to go? And like, you don't know yet, you're coming up with that on the fly, but. It's important though. It, it totally fleshes them out in a, yeah. like a freakish way that you wouldn't think, like, yeah. wouldn't realize. It also kind of goes to show you um, that even though you work in like visual arts and visual medium, and I come from an acting background, how much overlap that so is. So much overlap. Because we're both storytelling. It's all storytelling, yeah. correct. Yeah, correct. totally. That's really cool. And like, I think these questions answer a lot of like their visual answers and you're doing a lot of the internal, it's like all, it's For just sure. that shows out on the outside. Well, and there you are people, you know, there are people and I'm kind of, I work a little bit both ways. Some people were uh, kind of a slide on the, uh, on the spectrum of being inside out people yeah. when it comes to how you approach your acting yeah. and like starting here and working out. But there are absolutely people who are outside in people and uh, for example I worked with this guy we did a production of um, the breakfast club back in the day at stage production yeah and um, the guy who was this character's name the rebel the oh I don't remember the degenerate you know dirtbag guy yeah uh, throughout all of rehearsal he wore everyone I know tell me chat um, you'll know this was years ago, but he would always wear um, these fingerless gloves. Yeah. That he wore from rehearsal all the way through to production. Oh, like super method or super something? Super kind That's of method. method right? Yeah, because it like your clothing, and it is, and I actually agree as an actor, I think um, I, I agree getting in wardrobe earlier as opposed to yeah. just a dress rehearsal. Yeah. Because there's a lot. We do it, it in your day-to-day -day life. Like if you wear, just the way you change your clothes affects the way you move or some of your mannerisms. A hundred percent. So you have to like, you, you keep those things in oh mind. God. And we, um, I, a lot of times in theater, uh, the, I've had several directors and coaches who would throughout all of, all of production, make you wear the shoes that you were gonna be wearing. Wow. Like the shoes are almost more important than anything else because it affects how you stand. Whoa, so, yeah. that's super interesting. Yeah, I've yeah. never thought about that in a million years. Um, I think another good sample of that, while we're on this like example kick, uh, I've been on this like big Jenna Marbles kick lately. Like I, 
her, like she's this YouTuber, she's so great. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know, she, I'm sure everyone does, because yeah. she's amazing, but um, she does all these random videos, and one of them recently was, she was giving her boyfriend fake nails, <laughs> and like, as soon as he put some of those nails on, he was just like. Like changed? He was like, yeah. already. <laughs> Totally <laughs> attitude change. So I think you yeah. know costuming and what you put on your back and what you choose for your characters to wear and um, can say like so much about them, yeah. especially in storytelling. Like maybe not in real life so much, but I, I actually I think that a lot. But oh, for sure. I mean, everyone you all know when there's you act different and you like your posture is different from when you're in your sweats at home versus when you get up and you're dressing, dressing your Sunday yeah. best yeah, and wearing your true. heels and then you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, you, you hold carry yourself, you carry it different. Yeah. yeah. So shit's important. It's important. And um, especially when you're storytelling, like drawing your character and doing D&D, it's all like you're on, telling your own story. Or like who didn't, Je not Jester, not, Laura, oh my God, please don't burn me, chat. That took me a second. Um, Laura, I remember, what, doesn't she have an infamous story about like her character, she's just like, make her hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, that's totally worked backwards, right? Like that 100%. was yeah. her only descriptor. Like some people had whole I backstories hot. and stuff. Yeah. It was like, just make her hot. It was like all she did. And like. But then she worked right, like towards the art. Yeah. So that was another example of like wearing, working backwards. Yeah. Um, but what did you guys give Kit? Like, did you just like let her go crazy? Like, I know the feathers was something. Kit just Kit Bus. Yes, Kit Bus. Kit Bus, who did the art for first for campaign. first round. Yeah, uh, it was kind of mixed. Some of us gave more than others, and then a lot of people we did kind of give like. Um, like personalities, like yeah. you know, like with Keila, then my initial was like she's kind of shy. She just she's had a, a lot lanky. to give on at that point, like two years of history already. Right. Yeah. Oh, something else. Now, now that we're talking about that, um, something else you consider is like you know if you're starting your game like level one versus like level twenty, you know, like what kind of gear and attitude and you know oh, look clothes. Look at this guy. I know this is what. These, what has happened to him? We. Uh, that was like level one, you get like a stupid pop gun and like the higher you get, you know, the cooler your dude looks or whatever. So you get a pop gun, level <laughs> one. that's so cool. So that's also like what level is your character at? Like how much yeah. money do they have? The how successful? Mm -hmm. Like this also will affect kind of like, I think it's good to not make them too pimped out in the beginning because you have some place to go, you know, when you keep, you get better. Yeah. And, you know, maybe something happened in the campaign. It's a campaign where he like lost his eye or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Some I things have room to grow. Room to grow. Um, an another character design thing that happens all the time is uh, you guys kind of have to do like these turnarounds, turnarounds. which is like a very animation thing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, you know, for this video game, it was isometric, so we didn't really need all of this, but we did need it at like a. Um, that oh, certain sorry. angle, yeah, yeah, your X and Y axis. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, so here's a, this is like a, a minor or whatever that you could play in the game. But yeah, these were fun. We had a lot of fun. Here's some these, bad guys. Great designs. Yeah, <laughs> they're also so different than what I've actually than I feel like what you do. Yeah. Like oh. Well, here's a, a example. Uh, we did. We were trying to figure out what art style we wanted to do the game in, and I, I was like. Well, you tell me, like, here's a bunch. Wow. <laughs> so I like cartoons and I can do realistic, realistic stuff. Realistic, yeah. So I was like, you guys tell me. And then we kind of went with eight was the thing everybody kind of liked the most. With These with, are goofy and also seven years old. Like, I, I've gotten with better. With A? Since then. Is that what eight. you said? Or B, I'm sorry. With I thought B. it was an eight. Um, we went with B. So yeah. all the characters that you guys are seeing are kind of like in that Based same. Based off of that. Same realm, but yeah, uh, uh, I like just gave them a bunch of different options, like Powerpuff Girls style, <laughs> kind of over <Yeah>. here, <laughs> to something like hype, like a little more rendered and dark and creepy. And yeah, we kind of landed more Diablo more over here. Yeah, um, but yeah, cool. it was like super fun, and 
this is like such a dream job. Yeah. I mean, I did right. walk in one day and it was like, it's over, welcome to Silicon Valley, today's your last day. <laughs> That's how that job ended. <laughs> but There's no such before that, that, it was super duper fun. Yeah. And like on that same note, like, uh, you know, I don't know if, you know, you guys are, some of you guys more serious about art want to ever apply and I, I got, uh, for this job, they asked me to do art tests. I applied and they liked my stuff and I did this art test, but they just told me cowboy, like zombie cowboy game, but they didn't tell me what art style they needed. Um, so I gave them all of them. I gave them all the art styles wow. in my art test. I wanted this oh job. It was goodness. my first job out of school and it had like healthcare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a salary, and I'm my I was my my parents had just paid for art school, so I yeah. was like, okay, I have to I get have this to get job. That. Like, what can I do? So I gave it all. I did this like really creepy, like realistic one. Yeah, very Walking Dead. Uh huh. And then I did these like goofy, so very yeah, Plants vs Zombies. Yeah, goofy Plants vs Zombies, dude. And then something kind of in the middle. This is probably my favorite. This is like the I mix. love those. Look at this like. Can can show for all <laughs> situation. Yeah, here. she's seen better days. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this was super fun. So and like, I remember never really feeling grossed out by my own drawings before, but this is the beginning. The, this tapped into that. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm doing this to myself right now. Because you know, I left to my own devices. Everyone looks like. Did you like Supermodels. research levels of decay and stuff to um, this? I looked up other zombie games, like cause I, I wasn't trying to like find dead bodies on the internet yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I, I looked up other zombie reference, um, but uh, that were drawn by other people, but not really. I didn't want to look at dead bodies on the internet. So I tried to avoid that. But yeah. Um, does anyone have, you wanna yeah, answer some questions maybe? Character design questions? Go ahead, questions? we'll give it a few, uh, a um, little bit of time. If anybody has any questions, and I will look for for Babs. Uh, here's like some of the baddies. I didn't really talk about these guys, but, um, but yeah, when you're doing your party, you wanna try to make it a little bit dynamic and everyone feel like different and be their own star. And, um, my personal game, I don't know if I told you guys this, but it's got, it's heavily magic users. So like my my own home game has a lot of um, magic users. So we ended up calling ourselves like the Sorcerer Scouts. Oh my God, so cute. <laughs> Cause you know, we're a bunch of soft magic users. So our DM has to go a little bit easy on us for now until we level up some, but yeah. So yeah, and, and that, that boy body, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I let's feel we should go. We should like, draw. Some, I kind of feel like boy body might be easier than girl body because they're so beefy and angular. But maybe I'm wrong. Really? I mean, I, you can make girls that way too. We could draw today and see. Let's see. The like career questions or character design questions. People have a lot of questions about your D and D character. Really? Yeah. And who they are. Um. Her name's Chie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can. Oh, this out. is a good one. From, yeah, I guess let's do. Let's talk about art. From stuff. useless cantrips. Ooh, stop moving. How do you choose color palettes? And how do you choose color schemes? Is there a limit to the amount of base colors you'll use in a design? Um. Yeah, I think it's good to have an, a limited amount. I think it makes for a better character. Um, base color picking would come from me asking those questions, I think, like what their background is and, you know, like this guy, for example, like he does, he wouldn't have a lot of color. He's the blacksmith who literally just like goes to work, does his job, probably doesn't wear a lot of like bright, crazy colors, frilly colors. Right. And then this is like very Ursula inspired. Oh, let's show my screen. <laughs> Um, this very Ursula inspired like Madame of the of the Lady Favors the house. <laughs> um, she would 
it be like more fabulous and like have the trappings of like um, a fancier kind of high society, the but maybe not favorite. the classiest of society. You know what I mean? Like so yeah. she's like gaudier for sure. Um, and we were actually just talking. Um, but yeah, before. limited colors like better. Pick a few colors, like two yeah. or three or four colors for your like character. Like dominant colors. Like, l like let those like like you were saying with your own y'all's own characters. Right. We pick, kind of picked our palettes. Um, you kind of picked your palettes and it, went with it. We were just talking before we started the show about how if you do shortcuts, it's headaches later. And you were talking yeah. about picking your colors ahead of time yeah. before you get going. L limiting yourself. Um, and you said you'll do like a swatch or like a little a yeah, thumbnail? Yeah, it's called like a color thumbnail. Um, and even these, like when you're doing your silhouettes or your character design or your poses, like drawing the pose like really small without like stressing out about it. Interesting. Might help you guys. Like you can get those out a lot faster and um, it might just, it'll see it easier and you won't spend so much time kind of get everything like perfect. Yeah. So I think doing so like thumbnail, tiny, like yeah, it's called, it's a tiny, even the, kind of like, like this size. This is like what they call it. Yeah. Right. And then you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, do I a wanna... little, um, let's do more just green. Yeah. Like if you do a little square and then draw your, your character's oh, pose like inside like, that square and like reference it until you guys feel like you got body down like for now just like reference it and the more you draw it you will get like it will start to absorb and you will be able to take some liberties <laughs> i've taught her nothing <laughs> no, you know <laughs> that's Look. what we taught we went over those see okay now you just gotta like, redo that square that's fine but yeah you're you kind of you get a little idea going on jumping and then so Pew, a better brush pew, for this pew. kind of thing. Like, why don't you try doing, um, do a little character silhouette with that one. So I gave her kind of a bold, chunkier brush, and this might be better for drawing, like. I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm, um, uh, creepy, <laughs> you know, like. Wait, I'm making it bigger, creepy. I'm making it bigger. Wait, the brush? Yeah to get it like down. Oh, dang, that's batty. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. and then you're working on a silhouette, right? So like get big chunky shapes down and then you guys can like carve into it um, and kind of like figure it out from there. It's a lot like sculpting when you're like thinking of boiling it down that much. But yeah, character colors, I would pick a few. And again, Maybe. ask their background, would they wear bright colors? Would they wear dirty colors? Would, like Caleb, like no joke, like all of his, he yeah, answers all the questions right there. So I think about your character um, and ask those questions and that's, it'll answer itself. It really will. Okay, I don't entirely know what <laughs> like, this is. Uh, I was going for sneaky, but now I feel like it's more like, Pre-hop. Yes, like, like he's gonna, animated. He's I'm going gonna, somewhere. I mean, he's he's going. But like, what's his story? He looks very blank. You know, like think about. Okay. Was, would he have a staff? Is he wearing a cape? Don't judge Stickly he? Stan. Okay. <laughs> I know he's not as important as <laughs> Scary Terry, but Stickly Stan has feelings too. Okay. <laughs> Let's do another another cue. Why are you racing this like a noob. Yeah, really, you could just click back. I in know! Okay. I know! <laughs> I'm, Episode eight. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I feel it. I'm feeling it. Let's do another cue. Is there any more? Cue. Oh, another cue. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. How do you keep from being from Raphael? How do you keep from being redundant when drawing women, men, or people? Like from, I guess, having the same features over and over again? Oh my gosh, I'm so guilty of that. I think, you know, you just gotta try to recognize it and push it and uh, practice different features and make sure that you're giving everyone like a unique, unique situation. So. I think going to that Pinterest board, I, I do a lot if I, especially thugs and stuff, like I kind of try to make them look more interesting. Man, I wish I had um, 
knew this question ahead of time, I would have shown some from, <laughs> I can't, I'm scared to go on the internet because what will pop you up. You don't know what will pop up, um, yeah. Yeah, for motocross, I'll, I'll, I'll try to like do kind of greasier, funkier faces on some thugs and like I don't have, usually have those in the back of my head, so I'll like look them up, so. You know, you want to want to try to learn a few different noses and or new different eyes, eyes and, and shapes and like ratios on faces. Like when we were doing Travis's head, and now he has like kind of a bigger a forehead. forehead. <laughs> like things like that'll help. You know, considering that across the board of your characters will make them all look more interesting. Um, there was a good one here. Oh, here we go from Simone W O Simone Wo. Dang it to. Dang it to hell. <laughs> she said, uh, I'm 17 and recently got commissioned for this really time consuming project that I really want to take, uh, but I'm afraid I won't be paid enough for my time, especially considering school. What okay. would you do? Yes, I would weigh a bunch of different factors. How much do you love the project? Is it something you can add to your portfolio? You know, like, if you really love the subject matter and it's something that will look super dope in your portfolio, like even if they aren't paying you a ton, it might be worth it to take on that job and have something and build your dope and, and then still kind of even be being paid for something of it. Like I've took on lots of jobs where I like never posted anything because it was maybe subject matter that I wasn't passionate about and I didn't want to put out there to get more jobs of. Like I was doing these, it was like this, way back before I was like still working in, in games and I was doing all these side jobs and I was doing like this Russian baby clothes mascot. Oh weird. And it was so weird and they were very picky and um, I didn't love exactly like, I, my drawings were good and I felt good enough that, to give it to them because they were paying me but <laughs> Did I want to draw more baby, baby clothes? clothes? Like, no. <laughs> so like, you know, I was very selective about what I put in my portfolio because that will get you those other jobs. So I think that's also something to think about. Um, how, f if it's time consuming and you're not into it, it might not be worth it to, to do. Like I would, I would consider that like, but if it is a subject matter that you're passionate about, it's gonna be worth it to take the chance on. So I think weighing that kind of factoring answers a lot of questions for me, like, you know, how much of it is gonna benefit you in the long run? And, you know, if it's just gonna be good practice, like maybe also take the job, because then you can, um, you know, it'll just, you're getting paid to grow, basically. Yeah. You know, so. Is, especially starting out, and I feel like starting that's. Starting out, yeah, you can't be as picky and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's across the board for any artistic medium. But what you can be picky about is like what you put in your reel or what you uh -huh. put in your portfolio. So like, that's gonna dictate what jobs you get in the future. So I, I think one of the biggest things I learned from graduating to now is like, um, don't put stuff in your portfolio you think you're, it's gonna get you work. like put stuff that you're like passionate about and the work that you want to get jobs of. Um, we have another good kind of uh, uh, getting started in profession question, which yeah. is how do you, it's really frustrating because it won't stop <laughs> moving. Um, how do you present a physical portfolio, a simple three ring binder? Uh, protection sleeve, something bigger. Do you even still use physical portfolios much like, these days? Like honestly, no. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> like, what I was thinking. Like honestly, no. It's um, like we've, we've retired eight by tens of really? our headshots and yeah. stuff. Everything's digital now. Yeah. You know. So same, sometimes, same difference. Sometimes people still want them. Yeah. But yeah, digital. I tell you what I did out of school because um, we had a, an amazing. Um, like head of illustration at MICA. And instead of making us all get these like black binders that everyone, every Joe Schmo had, we made books of our portfolios at the end of the year, like hard back books. Yeah, cause it's not hard to go on like Vista Prints. No, like that not now. at all. It was like Lulu Prints or Lulu something was like the website back in the day. There's a bunch of them now, but um, we went on there and we designed covers for these books. And That's cool. so like when you, 
when you at Bay Beth and Good Day, you'd bring all of those books around with you and you'd give them to editors and let them like hold it. And you know, it was like, there's all these binders and then this like fucking classy ass book, book. for them to like, nice designed, polished book. So like, um, it doesn't really exist anymore, but I would still say get, make one. Cause it's just really nice to see. To have, and, like, you, yeah. Just in case, you mm -hmm. know? And even if you do bring it, like, I am at cons and people do show me work at cons and it isn't in those black binders. But if you brought me that book, like it I would, would it would I would automatically get my attention. And even I would be like the taste level of this person is high. Yeah. So like maybe art is not their thing, but maybe like design or like something where um, taste and like your class level or yeah. classiness levels, like your something. care and attention to detail. Exactly. And... Would be something that think about and that's a whole nother um thing that you could get paid for for caring about like design yeah. and like uh an editing eye and things yeah. like that like Laura I, Nipsom our amazing artist she's an incredible artist yeah. um but she also does all of the layout and design for our art books because totally a totally different set like yeah it's my this point. is a skill but that is like a whole nother skill and I graphic design I, I have a roommate that was a graphic designer in school oh, yeah. and it just like blew my mind to have that much interest in that yeah. one thing watching just, lauren work yeah i'm like i wouldn't have thought about that yeah. she's looking at the margins she's looking at the font she's looking at the border and yeah look ink up bleed and any like expensive corporate logo and look at how much like goes into that and yeah oh my god there's this most amazing speech that this really amazing graphic designer gave i wish i knew his name off the top of my head, but it's like, it was like, uh, went viral on Facebook. He was talking about- Chat might know. Um, chat might know, but he was talking about how, why he's worth his time, like the huge sum that cor he demands corporations to give him. And he's like, do you want me to get this done like fast and well? Or do you want to hire someone ill-experienced and have to go through many, many, many versions yeah, of it with this more time, experienced person more that's resources. slower and not as good as their job, and in the long run is going to waste more of your time by by um, by needing your feedback and like ye that type of language to like also get logos done and things like that where you're working with someone who's maybe not an artist like that is also a huge headache on its own because like you're having to try to teach them the language you need to hear from them to like. Yeah. Tell them how to do their job. Just in my time but like, production alone. He was making this huge point where he was like, do you want to skip all that bullshit and just get it done right? Yeah. Like the first time, that's when you hire me. Yeah. It was like, duh. Yeah. When you're, when you're on that level, you want to just like, and you have that amount, of, you have the money, like just pay someone to do it. To right. do it the right way. And, yeah. it, and, and like you said, it might actually end up being cheaper in, in the, the long, long run because you're not he's not having you're a not revision it mm -hmm. and it's not going to be a bunch of like i've unschooled I've learned that lesson in, really in my time in, like, over the course of hiring, things maybe and not so good things right, or, or new people and then and, yeah. it, and then sometimes you're just you take a chance on somebody and you don't know and then yeah. sometimes it's just finding the right person 100 percent. you know and too. people people wonder all the time like why people will keep going back in this business to the same people. And mm -hmm. it's like, once you know, once we have like, the people who work for us. Yeah. You know, Trust it's and great. Like, people that work hard and do their job well is like, we're the weight, they're worth their weight in goals. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Let's What's see, it? anything else? Maybe, yeah, maybe one, one more question. question. We'll get to drawing. Let's one see. Or two. We, we get another good, another two good another ones or something. Another two good ones. Mm -hmm. Hope this is fun. I hope hearing this kind of stuff is yeah. Fun I hope you guys are chat. liking this. Uh oh man. Oh, here's an, a good one. Is it man? It goes so fast. Um, from Reineru, is it okay to contact professional artists for information, interviews, or to get feedback on your current work? If it is, how do you go about not being the worst? It went away. The worst, I'm assuming, is um, more or less the point. Yeah, is it okay to reach out to professionals? I, I think it's okay, but also don't expect an answer from everyone. Like being on the, the other side of that, you get comics and like, 
this type of work where you're a freelance and you're, it's your job to like answer emails all day and manage yourself, like answering those can be time consuming. If it's like a portfolio, I usually can like, I can see what's wrong right away and like answer it really fast. I think what is more, I get a ton of and don't feel exactly the most sincere is when like somebody just wants is doing a report for school and they just like need a professional's like two cents on their thing and like, mm. and I'll get like, dear, dear, um, like blank or something, you know, like it won't even have my name in it. Like <laughs> I'm a big fan dear of your artist. work. Yes, yes, exactly. I'm a big dear fan of your work. Doesn't name any of the things I've worked on. <laughs> like, can, would you please answer these industry questions for me? And I was just like, bro, you didn't even, write my four letter name, name. here anywhere. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna take time out of my day to help you like, but if they like put my name in and they're like, I'm a really big fan of like your, and like name some things I worked on and like what really stood out to me is like, the clothes are like the, you know, and, it was, and I'm just like, okay, this person knows who I am wrote my name in, like at least looked up some books I did on Wikipedia or something, like read them enough to notice that I'm good at like coloring and characters and like that, you know, like that, if you put some thought into it like that and like write it in like four lines or something, don't write everyone don't like- Don't write a manifesto. Uh, don't write a huge manifesto. It, even when I was applying to this job, uh, t when I, before I got the art test, I, wrote, I, s I sent them my portfolio and I was like, hey, screen. I was like, hey, like, this is my portfolio. It's like, I would love this job. Like, you know, I had a cover letter attached or whatever, but I, I really wrote two or three lines and then I posted clear links to my portfolio. So like, even when they opened the email, they immediately could see these links to my portfolio. Yeah. There was no like reading this big long thing, like they could go writing right them a it. book mm -hmm. that like, like accessibility. they can go straight to the goods. Yeah. Which people that don't, I don't know how you do normal jobs and apply and like stand out. Like that's so, I've never had to do that. I'm always just like, nice thing about art is like you can just like show off your portfolio and be like, this is what I got. This is what I'm about. This is what I'm about. This is what I have to offer. That's hard. I it can't is imagine. Hard. We acting, yeah. right? It's just like a sheet maybe sometimes. And if they actually look at your reel, that's yeah, a whole so other thing. Yeah, if they click on your reel and then yeah. the rule that we use, um, and it's probably pretty close in the art industry as well, is on average, they might watch through 30 seconds to a minute yeah. of your reel. That so, makes sense. And then sometimes if you have like a five minute reel, it might even turn them off even more because oh, yeah, watching like, five minutes. Fuck you, you want to take five, up five minutes. minutes of my time with your yeah, we're, mediocre, sometimes you'll most pull up, likely reel? Yeah, you, sometimes you'll pull up YouTube videos of people that you enjoy watching and you, you see five minutes and five you're five like, mm, I, I get the gist in two. Please stick around for this whole episode. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of, we love you and your Please stay. your views. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks it's for very watching. important and supports our channel. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we uh, the rule that we use in reels is you want to put and kind of the same thing with like what you were talking about. You want to put what you're most marketed as, what you want to go out for, mm -hmm. your strengths up front yeah. in like the first 30, 30 seconds. Yeah, because chances are they're gonna turn it off after 30 seconds yeah. to a minute. Totally, totally. Um, so, you know, in the portfolio, you kind of want to pepper it with heavy good ones in the front. You shouldn't put anything in your portfolio that you're not crazy proud of first off. Like if you're feeling mediocre about any of it, and I'm same thing with your reel probably, don't put it in. Take it out. No. It is way better to have like seven stellar pieces than like 14 with like stellar and like medium peppered in. 100%. Yeah, just same same with the with reels. The, leave with the winners. Mm -hmm. Leave with the strong ones. Like no matter what, it's better to have something small and very good than like a lot of because it shows yeah. you have an editing eye. It shows you have good taste. It's like way beyond just like your your drawing skill. Yeah, a hundred percent. And your acting skill. Yes, I agree. Sorry, I didn't interrupted you. Maybe did you? Finish? No, that was pretty much it. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty much it. Lead lead with your best foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Should we draw? Okay, let's draw some, because we have to give these people homework, too. Yeah. We'll do... 
Well, the, we're going to maybe do, we have Liam on next week. Yeah, Liam is next week. Liam is coming in. Our dad. Our dad. I heard Marisha caught him practicing already, which yeah. is so cute. He watches. I can't wait. for watching Lemur. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so Liam, we'll probably draw one of Liam's characters next week. But after that, that following week, and I'll give this homework again next week, but after that, uh, we're gonna start inking. Yes. And the show's so short that I really want us to maybe come in with the drawing pre-done. Um, or one of our previous sketches. Or one of our previous sketches, but I think it'd be more fun to have a new drawing. Um, and then maybe y'all's homework will be something like, try an angle you haven't done yet, and then we'll ink that, you know, later. I like that. Or yeah, that's cool. Like that. That's cool. So we'll, we'll, and maybe if it didn't turn out great, you'll have it. You'll have another extra week to, yeah, like, to practice. Get yeah. to get it tight. Get the sketch tight, and um, you know, get your hands on some of that paper that I recommended too, because we're gonna start inking, and um, we'll be a little bit out of that practice territory into more of like some serious biz. Some a little bit more serious biz. So, um, inking paper does kind of matter a little bit more because it's gonna and then maybe bleed or right. it won't act right if you're not using. You probably don't want to use like the line the paper. The best paper. So paper. Um, maybe someone can like link that list, but that um, paper, that Borden Riley paper, I had you, I had on the list of the first or second episode. That's the one pretty with good. The Eiffel Tower. The one with the Eiffel Tower where French <laughs> people would probably not yeah. use. <laughs> um, that one's like really good to try out and it's not, in, you know, it should be in your local art stores and if not like hunt it down or um, just just buy one that maybe ask your ask your art store like what would be good for inking or whatever and give it a go and if you have the money maybe try a couple different papers you know every artist kind of has a different hand and it might be different for you so if you can be so um, fancy maybe try a few and some art stores will let you you know give you a sample piece or whatever you never know some of them have those like little oh, strips nice. of paper and yeah, you can yeah. draw it on the edge mm. and see what you like yeah yeah, yeah. um but you know inking you kind of you maybe not want too much tooth it should be really buttery and smooth so we'll start out with that and then the plan after that is to do some maybe a watercolor wash on it yes. or something yes. yes i know you're dying I'm to so get into excited. that watercolor so um we'll probably stick to black and white but we might do some color maybe for the final episode so we'll see um but yeah so marisha has got her head going we're gonna do a yeah. little lineup who should we add to our lineup maybe i was thinking vex yeah, or vax done... vax Sure. Like a scrawny we guy. I was going to say, we haven't done any of the twins Boys. yet. Yeah, let's do Not maybe really. a twin. Is there a way for me to, like, select this and then copy it? Oh, wait, lay a view. Yes. Um, go to the... Lay via copy? No, that's no. too many steps. Get out of what here. Am I Click doing? away from this. Um, do this, and then... Oh, where did you put let another me, dot? Here, let me drag this. Um, yeah. Over here, too, by the way. You just start a new layer too, if that's easy. Yeah, you get do your circle again. Just trash. Did you trash this layer? No, I just turned it off. Oh. Um, Learn in Photoshop. So if you're on a Mac, I'm not what? sure on a PC. Okay. If you're on ah. a Mac and you do a circle and you want to duplicate it, um, if you hold down Option, you you'll that? see this kind of double arrow thing going on. So like, see, there's a dark arrow and then a light, a light arrow. That's normal. That's what this, what? and that oh. means it's gonna duplicate. I see it. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's normal, and then it's doubled. So if you click this and then you click on the lines, it will duplicate, duplicate. it. And if you hold down Shift while you're holding down Option, while you're hitting that duplicate button, it will just like line it up like that. <gasps> Okay. So that's a little bit of a trick for. But and that's if you're on a Mac. On a Mac, Option and Shift were the buttons. So I'm not sure on PC, but I imagine it's in that it's left corner same, somewhere. Right. <laughs> so just click around. Okay. So but look out for this in. icon, and then I'm pretty sure Shift is still. Yeah, your Shift will still make it just B Shift. Go down straight. Um. Shift. So. We still have our lines from our last body, okay. but I'm just gonna use those as kind of like a general guide. Um, 
And wait, how'd you do the duplicate there? Oh, um, you want to press Option is on this one. So maybe Windows or Windows button. Alt or something. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Alt. And then... Oh yeah, it did it, it did it! And then Shift will make it go down a perfect line. Uh... So press Alt again and, and let go. And that should be two different layers. It should just make a new layer too. Yes! Look at this. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to do your eight heads, um, do your heads do now. Hands. Doing my heads. Um, I'm gonna just do the one and eyeball it pro style. I'll let Marisha do okay. her thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna add I will use that. These tools. Next to Kiki and the gnomes, I think that'll be cute. And um, even though Vax isn't built like Arnold, <laughs> we'll use him anyway. <laughs> and I'll kind of go over kind of, maybe you have a reference, you have like a, but it's not perfect. So how to like work with maybe the most kind of imperfect reference if you are stuck. Like, like for instance, we, ha we bought these rights to Arnold to show him on the show, yes, off the we website, did. so um, he's maybe not the perfect slender elf reference, but we're gonna make it work. No, don't do that, why did you clear? Because you're really just slimming this down a whole lot, but I think it's great for a re muscle reference period because it just shows, he's so chiseled, it like shows everything you'd possibly want. Maybe not everything, nope. but most nope. of it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Hang on. What? How are those windows? How is those windows? Why do those I only have slip? room for six? <laughs> Just shrink it. Okay. How do I shrink it? Um. Take that. Do this. Thing? That arrow thing. Yeah. No, and then this arrow thing. Oh. <gasps> Mm, no. Too many, do it first. No layers do this are first. Deselect this. Yeah. Okay. All right, what did it do? It did it. Mm, but only the one. Um, so episode is Marisha figures out Photoshop. Deselect. Can you press like Control D or something? Okay. Uh, if you drag this, it should. What? Why did that not do that for me before? Because you were using this square and you need to use this arrow The arrows. Thing. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I do not know the official names. I just know the picture buttons. Let's see, you want to use the move tool and you are using the rectangle marquee tool. So that'll just draw a square. It won't okay, select see. anything. The move tool will do all the things you want it to do. Have this now. Okay. Look at this. Look at this. Learning so many new skills. Okay. Together. We're gonna draw him, maybe not with the most clothes on, and then we'll add some toward the end. You're welcome. <laughs> um, hopefully I'm just watching some of this. I'm sure he'd enjoy that. Um, let's see, Vax. I keep wanting to say Vax, the show, but just like in the show. Um, Feels like, yeah, right? I'm gonna make Four him as still... tall as we made Bo. So I'm gonna draw him, use the same guide. So it should be with all these lines like you have, but just no heads. Um, it's weird, eight feels so tall now for some reason. It's I don't super tall, why. you don't have to use eight. You could use less if you want. It's okay. I'm okay. I use eight because <laughs> I made them all. Because <laughs> you put in the work I already. put in the work. <laughs> okay. So we have our little circle and um, I think when you're drawing this far away too, if you do, well, we'll get there when we get there, but you don't have to add as many details to the face because it's much smaller. So just use less marks. Um, but here we go. We'll do it to the face later. Do a little neck. Um, and since it's a boy, I'm giving him kind of a wider neck. And then um, I'm just doing his shoulders kind of one, two, three, kind of like third, one third up from this like little square area. Wait, let me, let me try, I'm, and I'm eyeballing. Like a new layer here, should I just? 
layer this situation. <laughs> We're still on some circles with Risha. Look, look. Let's use the Wacom this episode, Dad. <laughs> It'll be great. Hey, that was a Max decision. <laughs> Max! I am not claiming She's responsibility. Not even hear, hear me yell at him right now. <laughs> oh, he'll hear. It echoes through. Okay. Let's see. So, um. Oh, oh I told you, he, you speak and he <laughs> shall come. Yeah, I guess giveaway time. It's totally giveaway time while we slowly start building our bodies. Why don't you, why don't you push some of those circles back so they're not like so dark? Oh, I guess they made like a bajillion layers for each one. Yeah, so hold down shift maybe. Hold down one of those buttons and you can, Imagine. yeah, hold down shift. Shift. And then click through all these. Okay. And then that top um, one is the one that I've just been working on. <gasps> Magic. And just kick them back. I don't know where that other circle is. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so close. So, so close. close. <laughs> it's fine. He'll just have a, a nice dark circle between his feet. Yeah, or we um, can, you, your, your backs can be a little shorter. We don't have to use that. That's true. That He'll just stop there. He was shorter than Keyleth. <laughs> was he really? No, oh, it's not you really guys, canon. You come it's in just, on the show. You try kind to get away joke. with your drawings. <laughs> <laughs> your wanky drawings. Okay, let's do this giveaway. Um, as always, we're about to give you a keyword. Only enter it once. If you enter it more than once, you will be disqualified. Right now, the offer is only good for residents of the United States and Canada, excluding Quebec. For the official rules that I don't make, sorry, Quebec, follow the link in chat or go to critworld.com. The keyword is eraser for obvious reasons. Keep an eye Good on your one, Max. Keep an eye on your whispers, <laughs> and we will close the contest and announce a winner in the next five minutes or so. Let's see how much of a body I can get in five minutes. That's Let's what I'm gonna do it. Wait, why is oh, that's okay. All mm. right. That means there's 30 minutes left, right? Yeah. When we do the thing. Okay. Eight episodes. <laughs> Eight episodes. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. Still working on this. Um, uh, and we saw a lot of people so wondering where uh, we will be doing 12 episodes of this season of Pub Draw, and then Pub Draw will return. Yeah. Return. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but, you guys like so much. We're making more episodes. It's going to be awesome. So we'll go up to 12 and then take a little bit of a break. Yeah, we'll put, take a little break and then come back for season two. Yeah. So hopefully. We're that's trying when, to figure that's out. That's when the real shit happens, guys. Hell, Season yeah. two, we're getting a color, we're getting a render, we're getting the backgrounds. Hopefully which... you guys all keep practicing and we're gonna, we've been talking about things to um, keep you guys practicing and to help practice over the break. My how to draw a book, we'll call, no, I'm just kidding. Oh my God, <laughs> you say it now. But contact me, book deal people. You. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be awesome. It would be fun. Maybe one you day. You know, with all that time you have. Well, I have free Not time I have. Stuff. Comics doesn't really take a lot of time up, so like I probably would have plenty of time to do. <laughs> <laughs> the lies. The lies. The lies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Look at that. Look, I got shoulders. Oh my god, look at you go. Look. I was just, yeah, I was not even watching. I would say keeping up. I'm keeping up this time. Make his neck wider, but you know what? He's a He's slight a elf, elf boy, yeah. so. He's a linky elf Forget boy. it. Okay. Um, okay, and we've got Arnold body. all buffed out, right? So we can see where the muscles are, but we will we'll just use that as like a guide. I don't know if we can. <laughs> well, I can see them. That's a joke. That's a joke. Can you? Okay, I was gonna say yes, like very much so. Okay, how do you start with this manly V shape? Yeah, I'll usually go to the chesticles after this. 
Um, you'll start with these lines right here. Let me kick back Arnold so you can see what I'm drawing on top of. Um, but you know what, before that, let's do a little wireframe and kind of like choose our pose real quick. Ooh, um, yeah. So, I'm gonna just like take this little spine. I'm gonna kind of give his little tilted hip. Maybe he's like, has a little swagger, right? So, well, when I think of Vax, he has a little bit of swagger. So I'm gonna just, Swag. I'll have his shoulders straight because we already drew them. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I'll work with that and I'll tilt his hips a little bit. So I'll tilt them and then you know, keeping in line with these, um, with our guides here. So about like one, two, three, four heads down, you'll have his hips and I'm just tilting him a little bit. And then. So they're still kind of in line. They're just tilted. Just tilted, the line's okay. tilted. And then do a knee and then a foot. And then I'm gonna have just one sassy foot kind of out this way. That's kind of gonna be my like, Pose and then um, maybe like a hand on the hip here. And then one down. So the, that elbow is sitting kind of around this middle line. So this is like where the elbow and the belly button is kind of going to be, if it helps you guys remember. And his feet are kind of like most of like the bottom circle. Or like half of the bottom well, circle. Yeah, they they should sit on that bottom line. Oh yeah, the bottom circle. Yeah, oh. so it should sit kind of around there. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yours is really jetted out, and he's gonna be the most sassy. So like, put a body form on that. <laughs> he's fabulous. I was like, can I just can I just draw what you put here for, yeah. for a real second? <laughs> This is like how sassy you're. He is working that wardrobe, okay? He's just like very Next sassy. top model, here he comes. Okay, I would just make it a little bit slender, his hips a little bit more slender, do you know what I mean? Like here, like bring it, yes. like this situation? Yeah, like okay. bring in those, le or put, bring in this one. This foot. This far left leg I in. I understand. I think would do the thing. But keep the same lines, just like bring it in. Bring it in. Um, and <laughs> yeah, um, I love this wireframe. I learned this in school. It's, I still use it today. Oh, we've got a winner. Oh my goodness, we oh have my a God. winner. It's like the best screen name I've ever seen. And it's so perfect <laughs> it is. It's for perfect. today's episode. Yeah. Congratulations to Buff Mage. <laughs> it's so good. You are the wonderful new owner of the to the Intuos that's down there, it's it fell over. It's flat, and I'm not gonna pick it up. Um, <laughs> but you want but it? you've Yay! seen it. You've seen it. It's the one I held up earlier. You won it. Congratulations. Get a lot of use out of it. I hope you enjoy it. Yes. Send us pictures. Send what you draw. Pictures. <laughs> Tag us. Hashtag okay. pub draw. Hashtag pub draw. Buff Mage. I want to make all the screen names and just put Buff in the beginning of it. <laughs> buff Rogue. Buff Barbarian. <laughs> buff Bard. Buff Bard. <laughs> buff Bard. Um, Bard and the Buff. So yeah. Uh, yeah, this wire, oh, there's my old one from last week. Let's throw that over next to Arnold over here. Um. <laughs> Yeah, the wireframes are great. I use them today. Oh, you're giving them arms, right? Yeah, I gave them, them like arms. You can make yours doing oh. something different too. Okay. I think okay. your homework uh, for your homework this week, just to warn you guys ahead of time, I'm probably gonna ask you to maybe do Vex. Vex. Oh Vex. my God, you got the right? worst. The right? worst. Um, you're like, that's not that hard. And then you get in front of a camera and it's nope. very hard. Nope. <laughs> I'll probably ask you to draw Vax full body, but in a different pose than what we're drawing on the show. Cause I want to push you guys, push you guys to, and the more you like push your boundaries and your comfort level, the better you're going to get. So maybe get like a sassy male model <laughs> reference pictures. <Yeah. laughs> there was a really great, uh, uh, 
grog that the guy did that he, he took a picture of himself. Yes. I, uh, I didn't even, I was hoping have he, grabbed. I don't know if he emailed it in. I don't know if he emailed it in either, but, but he it posted really it on good. Twitter and it was super um, awesome. And he was, yeah. I bet somebody would know what we're talking about. Or yes. maybe post the link to it post in chat, link. but he did a, like a picture of him just like. You're doing this doing and this he's face. got a beard and he kind of, he's already a bearded buff looking <laughs> guy. So, so it was perfect. Yeah, that's shit, that shit's great. That's exactly what I want to see for your for your homework like you guys I love that you are following along with the show but I think it's going to separate the mice from the men if you take what you learned from the show and apply it and to like apply different it. stuff yeah um okay I want like I like this hand on hip situation yeah am I struggling I kind of want for my other arm him to be like holding up a dagger. Oh, smart, you okay. Know, like he's got this one up at the ready. So, so I'm gonna guess. I would like do that pose kind of and like feel where your elbow is and kind of like you, you literally can look at our screen over here and reference it. Um, I highly recommend like have some, if you know the pose you want, you can't find a reference picture, just do a little photo shoot with your very good friend or you're like, Horrifyingly, 20 minutes. If you're like um, working on your home laptop, my photo booth is literally just full of pictures, pictures I of never yourself. want people to see of me like <laughs> doing weird reference poses for comics and stuff. So, you know, get that pose yourself if you can't find a reference picture for it. Yeah, we have amazing technology now. We do. Called iPhones and camera phones. <laughs> it will. You know, that new technology. Make your life so much easier. Okay, 20 minutos, we gotta burn through. We move in. We move in. We speed um, through this one. I love that you're doing a little, maybe. Should I do it I'm too? Do you want me to do it with you or you want to try it on no, your own? No, I okay. want to be, I'm finding myself <laughs> as an individual. You so proud, all you can, the whole Carol cast. <laughs> no Babs, we can do it. <laughs> it's so true. It's the problem we all universally have. We can do it, Babs. Okay, guys. We wonder why we're exhausted and tired all the time. Why don't you take a break? No. Yeah, we can do it. Um, okay. So, yeah, I'm drawing his chest, and I kind of start with um, these little chesticle lines here. Um... And I know he's kind of facing his chest a little bit this way because of the spine. This is like the spine, so I'll just do little markers of where those hips nip, are. Nip reference. Nip reference, because it's a boy. We can add it. Um, no nips on Twitch. And then... It's a lot like the ladies except Maybe you don't taper in the waist as much, so like oh. just a less of a oh. tapering. So like the girls that maybe go in more like this. I see what if you're If your character's a skinny girl, if not, maybe not. But you know, wait, where are you, Arnold? Okay, I see you, Arnold. Yeah. So like, oh yeah, let me move him in case you're using that reference. Um so Arnold's waist is very tapered, but it's only because his fucking back muscles are insane. So, um, right. Arnold's is like huge. So you kind of have this like floating line over here. Like the, this back muscle. Yeah, yeah. Kind of so like, like, if you were to look a little bit closer, the, that ch these chests, this like chest muscles, um, is it not like your whole torso? It's just like toward that, the like, sitting on the line. top in the front. Yeah, so like on Arnold, so defined. Um, so defined. Oh, this is like even better here. Let me drag this one over. So like Arnold, I love we have these stock photos of Arnold Schwarzenegger for our modeling. Um, From like 30 <laughs> 70s, years ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that sits in the front, and then his actual torso is, you know, is behind all that. So 
backs would not be as muscled out because he's like tilting kind of. I'm like drawing a little bit of the side of his torso over here. Let's keep Arnold over here if we need it. Can't tell if like okay. the proportions are off or not. I don't think so. No, I think you're fine. I think, okay. you know, let's see. It looks One, like he's two, kind of like three. crunching. He's doing a pet. I think this is the problem. Yeah, I think you're it's over like, a little far. Like your hips are swung over super sassy. Which we style. knew was like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Getting but into this. Stubbornly but ignored I, your teacher as usual. No, I'm I <laughs> was committed. <laughs> You're committed. We could do it, Babs. Let's we can know what do we're it. doing. <laughs> okay, hang on. I can fix this. I can fix this. <laughs> um. So like that. You could is probably better. leave it and just move the legs over here. I'll do a little magic. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold down. Command, oh, wait, that... is there a command button? Alt, do alt for alt. me. Do shift. Shift. Do control. Control. Yes. Ooh. I just moved his legs over. Ignore that, where that head went. Um, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just feeling out the weight. You know, your character's weight. The head, the rolling head. <laughs> just ignore that, <laughs> ignore that. Um, yeah, his torso's a little long, but I think it looks good still. So like, I know we learned these rules, but I would just stretch the legs out some. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just make his legs longer. I think they need to be longer Cause here. I think th the waist up, it looks great still. Right. Okay, wait, hang on. So, feels like I'm giving everybody chicken feet. Well, you, kind of, but that's okay because you haven't even drawn the thing yet. Okay. All right, we only have 20 minutes. I'm gonna power through this a little bit. That's um, better, right? Following this line down, he's very skinny. I think I'm gonna slim him up some. He is. I'm giving him set. kind of like beautiful, slender, Shoujo lead, beautiful anime boy body muscles. So I'll do little little lines like this. Okay, clean this up so I don't do some of these like oblique numbers. That's this right here. If Travis was here, he could name all, all of the those. muscles. That was so funny. I'll give him a little bit of an arm, but really not much. So like what I really defined is this, this bit on Arnold, and then a little bit of this, but I'm just tapering it in some. And then just slim, slim arms. <laughs> He's still so sassy. <laughs> I keep trying to make him not as sassy. No, he's great. I think I and think he's it's just great. So sassy. If it was super wrong, I would correct it, and it's it's honestly it's not. Give him some abs. Yeah. Um, and then we've got this arm kind of sitting down Give here. So, sickles. like defining that little top shoulder a little bit. Um. And then doing this other arm, so like this muscle, just literally simplifying what we have on Arnold a little bit. So like doing this and then this. And you kind of want the muscles kind of be tilted a little bit because of the way they, so they're not like even on both sides. This one, the inside of the muscle kind of dips, creates a dip lower than this outside over here. That's really nitpicky, but if you're into it, you can add it. Oh, right, your your arm kind of. Yeah, see how his muscle um, over there, it kind of. It's shorter. Yeah. That's really nitpicky though. You guys definitely don't have to do that, but it just yeah. adds, a, it makes it look a little more authentic. Uh, um, okay. Uh, hands. Let's not try to tackle that the last 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna do a little a little mitten here. 
<laughs> Hands, uh, <laughs> skip. <laughs> skip, fast forward. Uh -huh. I'll do a little mitten. I'm gonna do Send a little fist over here. Actually, maybe I'll add a dagger just facing down. Okay. And then we know that the crotch ends around this line right here. So I have a little line here and then we're just following our little guide. So tapering at the knee and then adding the little calf muscle. Okay. Okay, and Arnold. Adding a little knee. Inspire me with your biceps. <laughs> Don't you feel like you like, kind of were drawing better with him hanging out though? Cause you cut, you I got do. all that reference. He really is like, like our mascot. <laughs> our pub draw mascot, draw mascot. 70s muscle bodybuilding Arnold. This Working whole time we thought it was Scary Terry. Nope. <laughs> nope. It was always Arnold. Um, what? I'm like, Marisha, that it's looks good. pretty good. Thanks. Like I'm, for how fast we're moving and. It's trying to like, so he would have like, he would have a, a, a forearm and then he would have more forearm and then he would be like, a oh, buff. <laughs> a little. And then this would be like. I might have to, I might need you to help me out with this costume because I don't have it necessarily memorized. There's a, Snake belt and a big furry cape. Yeah, and it's got a feathery cape, and then he kind of had like leather, leather armor. plated kind of leather armor. Um, so there's our there's our Vex body. Well, his calf is maybe way too big on that one side. Let's fix it. And the wire frame reference really helps. Like, don't you think? Yeah, and it kind of like it's more or less the outside. Yeah, and like that's okay too. Here, like, right you can make that wireframe and you can correct it. It could be like our beards, our hair. You know, like, it can be, you know, I kind of want that to be the outside of his leg. Like, ideally, in a perfect world, I would have drawn it like that, where it was like. But I saw the line I made and I was like, you know what? That's a that little works. too far. And I like corrected as I went along. Right. In my art heart, your art heart told I you. I just like fixed it as I went along. Um, so I'm gonna turn that wireframe off. And there we go. We got a little nudie wow. vex. My wireframe is also on the same layer. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop is hard. For your homework, Marisha. <laughs> no, Learn more kidding. about Photoshop. <laughs> It literally takes so long to get super smooth with it, so you do not feel discouraged. It's just another language. I still write. I still do stuff on the wrong layer. I just like can fix it like fast, and maybe you don't notice as much on the show. <laughs> um, I'll do his head real quick. We'll do a little long chin. I think I'm gonna change his angle of his face. I'm gonna have him looking kind of down, so I'm gonna do this and then do our little eyeball guide, and then this chin down. So I'm giving him a nice square jaw and maybe some like sunken cheekbones. You know, that really goth boy look. Mm -hmm. um, a little emo boy. And then maybe like some sassy eyebrows. Oh, this stupid head looks like a bowling ball. <laughs> now hanging out. I'm gonna give At a, feet. Like a nose that goes straight down, kind of. Get out of here, random bowling ball head. And then his hair kind of is tied. It's got kind of half up, half down. So I'm about being pulled back and then maybe cut some of it in the front here. And then kind of zigzag and then Maybe like a braid. Gonna be so pretty. I wanna add more sparkles. <laughs> okay, clothes, I guess. <laughs> so on another layer, I'll draw some clothes. Oh man. Okay. 
Um, so I'm gonna add a big feathery cape number. I'm literally no drawing way this I'm from drawing this hand. memory. I should. Oh wait, we've no got a lineup. <laughs> How would I even? His fingers would be towards the hmm. camera. That I don't know oh, about that no. outfit from this <laughs> from the old intro. I'm gonna just like <laughs> leave it. Okay. Is this that would be like a thumb? What? And these would be fingers. I'm gonna give him a little cape. Hands, how do they work? Ideally, I'd have some clothing reference, but legally we cannot show anything, so I'm just gonna leave this. Um, some armor I'll do is belt. He has this like snake belt. Which I'm just gonna bullshit a little bit. <laughs> I don't know the full physics on how he's holding this dagger, but um, <laughs> that's it's there. pretty good, Marisha. It's it's some it's a yeah, you got it's a little fist essence there. of a fist with essence of a so dagger. Like, if his fingers are going this way though, like I think the dagger would be more like that. Do you see what I'm saying? I totally do. <laughs> if you're like you got your pencil there, right? So you can pretend that's the dagger and like reference it like that. Oh, I should have put something in my hand. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give them these little like glove numbers. So okay, okay. Some clothes, some leather armor. I'm gonna just do this. <laughs> No, it looks like he's holding like a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> hints. Do you know what knives look like? <laughs> Do you know what daggers look like? I'm from Kentucky. Like? Of course I know what <laughs> knives look like. What did I. I gave him like. I did this commission and I didn't realize it till later, but I, the knives I had given him were basically like X Acto knife tips. <laughs> in my world, that's what daggers look like. And somebody called me out on this it is later. Tiny little. They were big, but they're like giant X-Acto blades instead of like proper daggers. That. Let's see. And he's holding a giant X-Acto knife <laughs> now. There we go. I'll give him some little boots. I'm sorry we had to do, the, do you so dirty like this quick and sloppy, Max, but. It's okay. Max Maybe is when Liam comes on, we can do, um, more a, a beautiful goth boy portrait of him, or Caleb, a dirty Caleb drawing, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever he wants to do. I'd say just visually, I, I would rather do Vax. Do Vax. But we'll, you know, we'll leave it up to him, whatever he wants well, to do. And I just want to do a beautiful goth. Caleb does have uh, your least favorite thing, which is terrible fashion. So. Terrible fashion. He's dirty. He's dirty. He's smelly. He's gonna stink up my wacom. He's just <laughs> my wacom. He's just built wacom. for built for judgment. I'll never, I'll never get it. it it's not meant to be. <laughs> Thank you, Wacom, for sponsoring, <laughs> Thank you for sponsoring our the show. shows. It's deeply appreciated. <laughs> um, okay, I'm cleaning this up a little bit. You like you were is talking he about? Is he angstier than this? Do I have him too sassy? I probably do. Whatever. Fox he could be sassy. sassy. Yeah. Yeah. Sassy. He absolutely would get sassy. Just like I've seen Liam get sassy. What I found, like, since having you guys on the show and talking to you more about your characters. Like there's the perceived, there's my perceived version of them in my head, and then y'all's truer <laughs> original perceived, perceived version of them in your head. And I think like little things that I that make me laugh and like appeal to me more sassy, sassy. versus angsty. Right. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'll do like sassy, sassy. even though like eighty They're percent right. of the time he was probably more like more angsty, more angsty. Yeah. I mean. Vax kind of had a little bit of like the, 
he issue that Keyleth had, which is like, he was actually much more jovial of a character, and then the world just kind of happened to him. And, oh, totally. And then once the Raven Queen stuff kind of happened, it was... Yeah. He was a... Uh, Dude. He was a sad, angsty I was boy like, after that. I was like fighting with so many people about the live show. I was like, no, he'll be there. They'll let him come back. She'll let him hang out for like one more day or something. Like they're they're gonna figure it out. And they're like, no, no. they're getting they're getting new characters. <laughs> that doesn't count, Max. You know it. <laughs> what have I done? I can't. I gave Vax a shower cap. Um, he's part of the yeah. team now. He, uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you get so... I think Details it's too, so tight. So, like, if you're thinking about his hair, it's pulled back, so it would be tight to his skull. And what you have is, like, a lot of volume. That yeah. he probably wouldn't have. He's just he's going for this new kind of kind of <laughs> beehive situation now. He's trying something new. <laughs> well, that's your show, guys. Um. Uh, no, just <laughs> Five, minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Well, it was almost the show. But yeah, um, we did a little little um, super fast. Little fast vaxy poo. Fast vax, little boy. I hope that helps. I'm sorry if it's too fast. You guys can pause it and slow it down later. Oh, yeah. um, we got a lot of um, good industry stuff in industry today. Kind of info, you guys kind of. Which we've been wanting to do, and we've been just so oh, caught up in our. Longer. My art heart is telling me that chin would be longer, so I'm gonna move it down. And maybe a little Adam's apple that like always kind of helps with dudes. Making their necks thicker always kind of helps with dudes. Um, more angular chin, you know, ladies, I'll kind of soften this curve and then dudes, I'll draw kind of a sharper jaw. Like Arnold has a very sharp jaw. I guess I could have like zoomed in and done tighter details on his face, right? I don't think you, like... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> When you're drawing so far away, you really don't have to. I think I love drawing faces, so I did it, but um, yeah, if you want to like get in there with the hand, feel free. I'm making this up off the top of my head, so the hand is kind of mediocre, but in a perfect world, I would reference that and take my time and really render that out. I gave him little like gloves because He's holding daggers all the time and tossing them. They probably would have some sort of like glove situation, rogue style. I really don't remember what his shirt looks like, so. It was like, yeah, was is it just like, like a tunic, I guess? Yeah, tunic? like a black tunic. Yeah, I'll tie it. I'm sure there's some armor of some sort. I just don't have it memorized off the top of my head. And he had that, he had that studded leather, I think. Whatever the uh, player's handbook <laughs> offers. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna end with my Vax looking <laughs> like he has nothing on but a feather boa and a shower cap, <laughs> and he is like living his. Look. Him and Keyleth, he just got, they just had a good time. They just had a he good got, time. He took a shower. He's he living his shower. best Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> I also know that like I'm seeing this. I don't know. It feels like his there. <laughs> Done. Hey. <laughs> there he is. I knew what was. I knew something was wrong, and it was all of the goth clothes. <laughs> That's what we're Just make it black. Oh god. Wait, what? What Photoshop? What? It's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight you today, Photoshop. But yeah, I know we did bow eight heads and you're like, oh but Bab's like, what if I want to use that eight head thing? But people are different. 
heights. I would draw somebody first, and then when you have somebody next to them, you can just kind of eyeball the proportions. Like, a lot of gro Grog's um, proportions were the same as our bow that we did, but I just like drew his head one, one head taller, and then because of that, I gave him like a bigger chest, but by the time we get to the his like legs, his lower half, it's exactly the same as Bo. But you know, because he's a big Goliath, I gave all his upper body like much higher. So just like little things like that to consider. Uh oh, I lost all my back's clothes. Bye, Arnold. I could keep going. Aww. For the rest of the <laughs> night, but Max is giving me the signal <laughs> to stop wrapping it up. But hang on, so Max can suck it. We're gonna drop ever. <laughs> Just kidding. Max is Max. gonna come <laughs> in. <laughs> Shut it down. Shut it down. It's gonna try and ask for a raise if we don't go home. <laughs> <laughs> what no? Um, so homework. Do we want to see full body full body vaxes? Yeah, let's see some full body vaxes. I know we did it really fast, but we're gonna really test you guys on um, past lessons. So like, pick a pose, reference some costuming, some vax costuming. Um, try to do them head to toe, and. You know, try to push yourselves a little bit. So, give it a go, guys. Yeah, I know we're kind of ramping up, and I know last time we did body basics. What am I doing? I really like him so far. I, like him so, I don't know how. This I like his works. legs are like splayed out. Like he's, <laughs> <laughs> so he's like feeling himself. <laughs> um, he's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, lean. Hang on, let's give him a cape. Let's give him a cape. The cape will frame his body out a little bit more. Like Marisha, I know we're joking about how silly he looks, but that's pretty good for us pressing it out really fast. I'm yeah, like, that, was like, impressed. that was like 15, think, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. sometimes like having a timer like that will like help you. Yeah. In a weird way. No, Like 100%. giving yourself constraints, like, like, like I was saying earlier, like not using all of the colors of the rainbow, like pick two or three colors, have like, values kind of down. I'll talk about values in a couple of weeks. We'll get into um, shading and coloring or like ink drawings and stuff. His dagger <laughs> has been an exacto knife, a Swiss army knife. Now it's kind of like a machete. No, don't know kind of what that is. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit phallic fine. actually, a little bit. Now it's kind of like a, like a fjelchen, <laughs> but not, but tiny. It looks kind of like a schmear. Yeah, um, it's gonna spread, her. spread some cheese. Uh, um, <laughs> well, yeah, this is great. Uh, I guess like this feels, that feels better kind of already. I'm trying to see like. He looks pretty good. You could probably tighten, for you, Marisha, how about you just tighten this up? Tighten this up? Yeah, Okay. like finish it. And just a real, real quick critique before we say bye. If you just put these, feet at an angle, it's gonna look, it's, he's gonna feel more like he's seated in the space. You know, cause, yeah. oh, I don't wanna quickly go over perspective and horizon line real quick, but we'll we'll hit that we'll maybe, hit that. maybe eventually. But it would, yeah. just do, do, the lit, do the feet a little bit of a tilt for now, <laughs> trust me on it. Yeah, it makes him feel less like he's like sitting on a yeah, flat plane. Literally his, because everything like else it. is drawn so well, you're not gonna be able, you're not getting away with the with, feet. The yeah, feet duck looking. feet. Yeah, the duck feet. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. You're getting too good for the duck feet. Getting too good, too good for duck feet. Yeah, guys, um, there you go. Hashtag too good for duck feet. Thank you all so much. I think that's all the time we have for tonight's episode of Pub Draw. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us and hopefully you learned something. Um, we kind of have gone back and forth in terms of 
entry level to more advanced. Yeah. To Today was a little level. heavy, but I think it's good to learn both. Yeah, and, we, and we've been wanting to get into some of the career element stuff as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. hopefully you all enjoy that, uh, enjoyed that. Let us know in the comments and tweet at us if you did. If you did draw something today and you want a chance to win into us pro, submit your drawings to pubdraw at critroll.com. Do us and Danny a favor and don't submit to the email unless you're in one of the qualifying residencies, but please feel free to share your work with us on Twitter with the hashtag PubDraw for those outside <laughs> of North America or in North America. We will announce the winner at the beginning of next week's episode and uh, come join us next week with the world's most handsomest art dad in the world. Who wrote this? <laughs> Probably Liam. <laughs> oh, and again, your homework is Vax, uh, different pose than what we drew, and you sh let's see some reference. Let's see some clothing reference. Let's reference. see that whole body. Yeah, because we've we've gone over reference okay, before. Bold, but I so believe in you guys. Push reference, yourself. different pose. Everyone's yeah, favorite row. Win the wake. Win the win the wow. intros. Walk them. Walk them. <laughs> yes. But feel free to share what you worked with us tonight. That would be great. Yeah, anything you drew tonight, though. Yeah. Let's see it. We love you guys. Follow your art hearts. And we will see you next week with Mr. Liam O'Brien. Bye. Thank you all for watching this episode of Pub Draw. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And watch the show live Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific on Critical Role's Twitch.